My name is Frank Vernon. I'm a PI on the San Jacinto Fault Zone Experiment, which is a continental dynamics program uh, funded by the Natural Science Foundation. We are here to study the San Jacinto Fault Zone in, in detail, and I'm standing on the edge of the fault zone itself. If we look down to the south, southeast here, we can see where the fault comes up along the baseline through this little canyon here along the side of the hill and back up, going back up to the northeast where it joins in the San Andreas Fault about 150 kilometers to the northwest of here. The reason why we're standing here today is that we're putting in a borehole strain meter right down below us on the fault. You can hear the sound of the drill rig in the background and we will be deploying that for the next uh, two weeks. The instruments will go in. We will be putting, in addition to this, we will be putting in a series of seismometers across the fault to measure trapped waves and head waves along the San Jacinto Fault Zone. We will tie all these data together in real time using uh, seismic data acquisition systems and bring data back up through HP-REN up to the point where I'm standing right here where we will put a repeater station. The data will be repeated from here and sent up to Toro Peak which is one of the uh, HP Ren hubs and then from there all the way back down to San Diego and into the broader community and into the other science users. My name is David Menson. Uh, I work for UNAVCO, part of the Plate Boundary Observatory. And I'm the project manager here installing uh, borehole strain meters, seismometers, and pore pressure transducers. What we're doing here on the site here is we're going to drill a hole to around 300 meters. Um, at about 250 meters it'll be open hole, meaning we're in we're hopefully in competent rock and then we're, this is the area that we're going to try and uh, make a solid contact to the uh, subsurface bedrock. So the context of the, uh, the, the experiment itself is to get a much deeper understanding about the whole earthquake process. So we have components that are looking at the paleo seismic record, trying to get a better dating of when prior earthquakes have happened on this fault. We are also looking at the strain regime, looking at putting uh, integrating them on these strain meters, such as there's eight boreholes in this particular region together, looking how the, the fault interacts with the, the, the rock around it. We're looking at the seismic measurements, looking at locations. We put this in many instruments as we can deep below the surface so we can get pure uninterrupted signals from the seismograms. One of the goals is to understand what the physics of the earthquakes itself are. We're trying to couple the th new theoretical advances that have been made with data we can, high precision data which we can observe here. We have a lot of activity in this particular region underneath this hillside over here. We have you know, thousands of earthquakes happening per year. We had a magnitude 5.6 happen 10 kilometers over here four days ago. We've had uh, in 2001 and 2005 we had magnitude 5 earthquakes in that region right over there, about 10 kilometers from this spot. We've had a, about a magnitude 4 every year in this, within about 20 kilometers of this particular location. This is a very active region of micro seismicity and getting up into medium level seismicity. In the bottom of this borehole, the, at the deepest point, we'll install a strain meter. A strain meter basically measures the deformation of the uh, rock in that local area. Uh, at a, the reason it's so deep is the sensitivity. So we can detect a change roughly of about one millimeter per 6,000 kilometers. So in, in context, roughly three times the distance between Los Angeles and New York, uh, we could measure a change in deformation equal to one millimeter. So strain is a uh, dimensions, dimensionless unit. It's basically the measurement of the change in length divided by the length itself. So it, how something has changed in length in one dimension. So you can easily extend that to, to three or more dimensions. Um, when we talk about the sensitivity of the strain meter, uh, when I say you can measure the change, when we measure, we can detect the change of one millimeter over a baseline of 6,000 kilometers. So if you have a 6,000 kilometer line and it compresses or extends one millimeter, that is something that we can detect. That's a level of detection that we're talking about with these strain meters that we're putting in the hole here in the San Jacinto. Once this is grouted into place with an expansive grout, so it's solidly coupled to the rock, uh, we'll, we'll come up the hole a little bit and start putting seismometers in the hole. Uh, again, coupled, not they're not as sensitive, so the coupling's not as critical, but uh, again, they're well below the surface noise 
both thermal and uh, anthropogenic. And then uh, at, near the top, if we encounter water, we'll measure the uh, pore pressure or the or the pressure exerted on the instruments below due to the change in 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 groundwater. They they're one of the largest signals we have to contend with. Like an, an inch of water raised in the in the water table will be a giant signal on the strain meter. It'll deform the entire area. Um, and then at the surface, we'll measure the uh, barometric and weather conditions. Again, the atmosphere exerts a, a large strain signal on the on the crust, and then again, that'll show up in our data. And we have to remove all these to get at the tectonic level signals. We are back at Scripps Institution of Oceanography, where we are receiving data in real time from the ANZA Seismic Network. These stations are deployed in a very remote area of California in the mountains and deserts and only HP Wren will allow us to connect these stations up in real time and bring the data back to UCSD and where we broadcast that data back to the U.S. Geological Survey for analysis. We take the real time data like this and we take all, this, all the seismic traces and then we generate real time locations for the earthquakes which occur and, that can be, and these are publicly available to anyone who wants to see that.